Gary. Well, Croy here is also my uncle, Gary. Croy looks great also. We just talked about that. Uh, but he's going to read for us today 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. This is New King James, by the way. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away <coughs> in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. And I'll read that last again. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So we're gonna we're gonna come back and read through this again. And I'm going to ask for your participation if there's anything as we read through it again in a few minutes. Which I'll read through again here if you want to relax and participate with us. Um, I want to ask you what is touching your heart today as we read the word again. Um, but for me, I want to first talk about sin, the idea of sin. Because I didn't really understand it um, until really recently, until I started coming to this church. Until I, until I started really, truly giving my life over to Christ, I don't really understand what sin was. Um, I was often called a sinner, um, and I probably rejected that idea, if I'm honest. Um, but I want to use, uh, well, sin actually is a, a word, a term, um, depending on the context it's used in. It can mean simply an error. Uh, it can mean a failure. Or as Pastor Thomas taught us, as an archery term, it can mean missing the mark. And oftentimes, especially in the New Testament, it's, it's used in, in that context, that, that sin means we're, we're missing the mark. Um, so I was going to bring, we actually got to shoot some archery this week, didn't we, Grail? Yeah. Is it, it's really easy to hit that target, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was there now, Grail. So we weren't that far away. It's a big target, you know, in archery it's a big target. It's not like this little dark horse, it's a big target. And I don't know, we're probably from here to the back of the church away. It's not that far away. It is really hard to hit, right? It's really hard to hit the target. <laughs> let alone the bullseye that's in the middle of the target. Yeah, it does keep bouncing off sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> so um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of illustrations like this in the Bible because it helps us better understand. So for me, sin, when I started to look at it this way, um, it, it helped me understand sin. So, so we have this dark word today we're going to use as a target. And um, for me, my life didn't really have a target prior to me really understanding what it meant to be a Christian. Um, and that our target is to live like Christ. Um, and so, so, so my target really didn't exist. I didn't have a bullseye. Didn't have a target. I was just living for me. But we're going to ask Graham and Lily to come up and grab a set of darts. They're very excited about doing this in front of you. <laughs> so let Lily get out of the way first. Now <laughs> back up behind the lights. Good job. Give up, Graham. Good job.
I'm not sure if it was before or after his uh, his salvation, but uh, <laughs> before maybe. <laughs> Well, let's see how great it is. Oh! So, I guess for me, number one, the idea of sin is to understand that, first of all, we have a target as Christians, right? And our goal is to walk like Christ did. Now, we also understand that we're human, right? And that we're prone to sin. Because John Keaton says if we don't believe that, then we're liars. And if we claim that we don't have sin in our lives, then we're liars. But when we first come to Christ, maybe when we're younger Christians, it's kind of hard to hit the dartboard. It was for me anyway, still is for me. But then as we mature a little bit, we see that God is a little older, a little more schooled, and it's he comes a little bit closer to the bullseye, right? But still, hitting that bullseye, man, is not an easy thing to do, is it? Um, I, want, I want to uh, go back before we read First John again to Genesis. If you want to follow along, Genesis chapter 3, I want to read through the first eight verses. And this really kind of encompasses, to me, the temptation that we deal with living in the world. Um, so I'll give you just a second. Genesis chapter 3, starting with verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, as God said, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden. The woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat from it or touch it, or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, Surely you will not die, for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate, and she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. And then in verse 8 it says, They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and hearing of this word. So, have you ever felt like that? Convicted so much by your sin that you wanted to hide from God? I know for me, like I say before I came my life, my life to Christ, um, I felt like that a lot. Um, dark inside, convicted, I didn't know who to turn to. I drank a lot. Um, I know what I did a long time ago. Um, that's kind of how I medicated myself to kind of deaden the pain. There are a lot of other things I did as well. But I didn't know. I didn't have a target. Right? So I was just trying to figure it out. Um, I leaned pretty hard on pleasing other people. Um, and I found out pretty easily that that doesn't really fulfill the need that I had inside. Um, and also pleasing myself. So I lived in the world a lot. We're going to talk a little bit more about that but as we reread through John. But any other thoughts on how, how, how did Satan tempt Eve in, this, in these verses? Lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. The fruit is beautiful. You know, why would you not eat it? Any other ways? The pride of life. What did you mean by that, Jerry? You'll be all You'll be all going, right? Uh, it caused her to question what she what God told her. Okay. They walked with God. Oh, maybe kind of 
This is an awesome illustration of the nature that we have inside of us, living inside of us. If we don't make a conscious effort to walk away from it, it will automatically consume us. Right? Uh, the desires of the flesh or food. Desires of the flesh. Okay. So, so is this familiar to us today? So let's read. Go back to First John again. Chapter 2, starting in verse 15, it says, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. So what does that mean? What do you think of when you hear that? What are the things of the world? Okay. Money. Power. Anything you put before God. Materials. Things? I want to have things? So really, I mean, the target is the one and only God, the Holy One, that we, we want to please Him and Him only. So all of our thoughts and actions should be directed at the center of the target all day long every day. But for me it was, there's one thing that I always did pretty well, and that was work hard. Uh, I did learn that, you know, from my dad. Um, the rest of the things that I learned were really from the world, my friends. Um, and I thought that those things were good. To be successful, to have money, to have a nice house, to have a nice car. That would, if I had all those things, then I would have arrived and everything would be great, right? But even as I acquired some of those things, um, I didn't, I was still empty inside. I still had this darkness living inside of me. Um, and for me, I don't know about you, but for me that was, that those were the things in the world, that they didn't quench the thirst that I had inside of me. Um, if anyone loves the world, the Father, the, excuse me, the love of the, of the Father is not in him. So even, and I think we see this a lot, I'm probably guilty of that as well. I've always believed that there's a God, and I always knew about Jesus, but I never really committed my life to, to him. Um, so it says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And that was definitely me. I loved the world, and I was trying to find my satisfaction and salvation in the world. Um, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. So then it goes on to say, the world is passing away, and also its, its lusts. What does that mean, the world is passing away? Mr. Dodge? Uh, it reminds me of Romans 6.16, where it says, Know ye not to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey? His servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death, or righteousness, or obedience unto righteousness, which leads to eternal life. So therefore the things of the world lead to death, so therefore they're passing away. But the things of God are eternal, and they abide forever. Anyone else? So I look at Eve. We talked about how Satan tempted Eve, but what about Adam? What was Adam's fault? He was looking at Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> I hear you. Now, you know, that's a big part for a man. That, that's a big part that we struggle with, with sin, is, you know, the, the beauty that, that women behold. Um, what else? Complacency. Complacency. So, meaning what? Anything else, kid? You need to church. Okay. You got to die and leave his life. Okay. That's good. I just think every conviction you make can be destroyed. If a house can burn down, a car can be destroyed. You can lose your job. You can lose your life. Everything can be destroyed. Everything. Yeah. Says the Lord. There you go. He said, oh, so the world is passing away. And they can pass away. 
spoke to them. He didn't go to sing to them. I mean, he needed that verse. He went to hell. So, really, it was this relationship through the heavenly house, I believe, that the Lord was saying, What have you done? And then the blind man cast down. So, Adam did not occupy that space for the heavenly house. So, what was that?
whether you're a member of or not, if you're a child of God, you can get to do this. We have bread, we're going to take a piece of that. We have uh, grape juice that you dip in. And it's a remember. And we're going to take a look. Uh, this shop is going to take a little time. I have some bread dodge to come up there. We'll just take a little time to examine it. We talked about missing the mark. And when Jesus died on the cross, he died for my sins and your sins. Our sins from the east, from the east, from the east, from the east, from so I just want to take just a quick moment to see if you reflect. Maybe you came here angry. Uh, sometimes uh, the enemy gets in our way as we're coming here. And, uh, we, uh, you all don't do it, but I've seen it happen and I've experienced it. But all of you were angry because I needed to be here by 10 o'clock. And you fiddled around and you're making me late to church because I'm going to church and I've got to be there at 10 o'clock. And I'm angry because you. And you know, praise the Lord. <laughs> but sometimes coming to church, all this stuff happens. And so we just want to take just a little time for you. Just reflect and say, Lord, you know, if you've done it, if, if everything is good, say, Father, I thank you that you've washed me clean. Just take just a few moments to, if we sin, confess your sin before him, he'll cleanse us from all the righteousness. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we too can declare our independence from sin and 
domination of sin. But we can declare our dependence to you as our God. And in Jesus' name we agree and say, Amen. 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 Amen.